I'm going to give you the world's quickest tutorial on how to write a reducible collection. Uh, when I first started with Clojure, um, there was a very useful tutorial on how to write a lazy seek in the original Clojure book. Um, this is going to be the same thing, a recipe on how to make a reducible collection. I will tell you what that is in a moment, but this was spurred on by a, uh, a tweet where it said, Clojure would be 100 times more useful if it did stream fusion. Stream Fusion is a feature that's in the Haskell compiler where it understands what map and filter are and it's able to sort of uh, elide them away and get rid of them and get rid of all the intermediate um, manipulation that they, they, that they cause. Um, so Clojure 1.7 already really has Stream Fusion essentially in user space without any involvement of the compiler. Um, it's super practical. Um, there are a lot of tutorials on transducers. This is not going to be one of them, but just as a refresher, um, if you have a bunch of transformations that are performed with a bunch of intermediate collections, transducers allow you to make an uber transformation and get rid of intermediate collections, among other um, uh, amazing benefits. Um, so this is not, I'm not going to show you transducers. What I want to show you is how to make the production of values more efficient. So if you think of the function into enclosure, it has three arguments, a source collection, a destination collection, and a transducer. Well, transducers are about making the transformation better. You can think of transients and persistent about uh, you know, making the destination better in, in, a, in a sense. What I'm going to show you is how to make the source collection better, how to make producing values better, and specifically, how to make uh, a collection that is only a collection in the abstract. It's something that knows how to be reduced, and it does so without any lazy seeks uh, or, or using any reified data structures. And so an example of this is um, somebody on the mailing list uh, used this technique to implement a reducible collection on top of a JDBC result set. You can think of result sets as, you know, there's sources of values, and you could reduce over the source, but you can do so without using a lazy seek. And so um, what they did was, um, you know, they, they implemented this technique, and it didn't break any sweat. It was fast. They actually had to put counters in to make sure that it was really working, which is hilarious. Um, okay. Closure 1.7 already has a lot of these improvements for specific functions like range, cycle, iterate, repeat. There's a few others. Um, I want to show you how to make this happen for your own collection. Uh, it's all through an interface. There's a bunch of different interfaces. So we're going to just focus on iReduce init. Please don't call the reduce arity without the init value because you're going to run into trouble. This is the reduce arity with the init value. Three arguments, the collection, the init value, and the uh, transformation uh, uh, the re reduction. Okay, so here's the step. We're going to break it down. First thing you do, you remember your init value. Then you're going to start producing values. You're going to call the reduction value, uh, the reduction function on those values you produce. You're going to check whether the reduction function told you to stop. And finally, you're going to loop up to the top. So step by step, we're going to implement range and a simplified version of range that only steps up by one uh, every time. So this is the lazy seek version, looks familiar. So here's the skeleton. You're gonna reify this interface. Uh, call the arguments RF and init. It's just gonna make everything clearer. So RF's the, reduce, the reducing function that somebody's gonna pass in. That's a skeleton. First thing you do, you remember the init. Okay, we're gonna set up a loop with an accumulator. Set that to the init at the beginning. Now you're going to produce some values, and you're going to call the reduction function. So a little bit more code. So we're going to set up an intermediate uh, i counter that's going to step through the range. And we're going to, if, if i is before the end, we're going to call the reducing function. And we're going to recur back to the top, incrementing i. OK? Now every time you call that reducing function, immediately check for the reducing function telling you to stop. OK, so you're going to check for early termination. You should do this right after you call reduce. Um, so that's, this is how you do it. You call this reduced predicate with the question mark. And if it is reduced, you're going to unwrap the reduced value and just abort the loop. Here's an example of using this function. That, that was it. Um, so here's how you use it. So here's the, the three arity uh, in two. We're going to have a transducer in the middle. It works. 
trust me. Um, here's an example of using it with the early termination. Uh, the take transducer has to do this early termination. So that also works if you kind of stick to this recipe. There's a couple other usages. Um, Sean Corfield uh, implemented a reducible JDBC query um, based on these ideas. Um, you should implement your stuff with this, with this formula. Um, and if you think reducing an, uh, reifying an interface is gross and doing that every time, it's kind of a lot of code and the, the reduced handling is subtle, you can make it generic. Um, here's a version of a function that takes sort of this a stateful pr production function f um, and an end of stream marker, we call it, we'll call it fin. And you can do that, you can use this to implement line seek without the seeks. It's just a, a pure reducible version of line seek. And you can see the, um, the production function there is just reading a line from the, uh, from the buffered reader. If, it, if it's done, it's gonna return nil, so you're gonna say that nil is your fin. And that's it. There's some more generic functions on this gist, but um, I hope that gives you a succinct tutorial on how to do these things, because it's sort of exotic knowledge now, and I wanna make it more um, accessible. Thank you.